All right, I got something else to fix tonight. This is a Kenwood space heater. According to the uh, sticker on the side, it's a 1500 watt unit. Got this from a coworker. This is actually the uh, the second one. She had two of them. I fixed one of them for her, and I'm going to fix the other one for me. Let me show you what happens when you plug this thing in. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's sort of a uh, buzz coming from somewhere in here. So, let's open her up and, uh, well, I already know what's wrong, but let's open her up and I'll show you. This should go without saying, but um, don't leave it plugged in for this. Okay, I've got it laying on its back here, and uh, we've got two Phillips head screws holding the face plate to the rest of it. And then this whole thing should basically lift up and that sort of undo at the top. It's just got a little crochet hook sort of thing at the top. And we got these wires hooking up right here. Now, this is a good thing to take a picture of with your phone. Also, if you look at it closely, you'll notice that uh, black, common, is on the one with two, two uh, spades on it. White is on the one that's not marked, and the red one has a little red dot. So, yeah, I think that's going to be good enough for me to remember that. And if it's not, I can look back at the footage and pretend I remembered it all along. There we go. And now I can set this part of it aside. Because it's not the problem. Okay, now I gotta get this cover off of here. It's a good idea to have a cup handy for all these screws so you don't misplace them all from hell to breakfast. Make sure you also drop the screws into the enclosure. That makes things so much easier for you. I guess I could magnetize the screwdriver, but where's the fun in that? So yeah, pull the shield off, and that right there is our culprit. So yeah, if you look at that cap, you can kind of notice the top of it's sort of bulged and domed. Um, yeah, they're not supposed to look like that. And that's our problem. So. Now we need to get this the rest of the way out. To do that, I gotta unhook all of these. This went next to red. That way I can't get these two confused, not that it would probably matter. And um, I'll mark that red and that red. Okay, go ahead and pop that out. They sure didn't want these rattling off, did they? All right, so now we need to remove this assembly because sadly we can't get to the other side of this to desolder it. I suppose if you were in a pinch and crunch for time, you could just yank this thing out and then solder the new one to the old wires, but I'm not going to do that. One big screw, little screw. Unfortunately, screws cost money, and so the manufacturer has affixed this thing to the case with these horrible little clippy things. I'm just going to jam a screwdriver in here, put a little tension on this, and then pop that out, and then go over to the other side. Okay, that's not under tension yet. I can hold that, probably not. One in here. Yeah, it's popping out again. This part's a little fiddly. As you might have guessed. There we go. Okay, that's got the top of it loose. There we go. Oh, here it is. So yeah, I ended up just um, pulling out on the top, getting the top ones undone, and then fighting the bottom ones out. They don't come easy, but they come eventually. So I try not to bugger them too badly. Screwdriver. Let's pop this out. 
one screw. Get in there. Two screws. Yep, there we go. Just carefully pry this out without uh, buggering it too badly. Now before we take this out, we should go ahead and just mark where negative is. I think I can remember it easy enough, but uh, yeah, just mark where the stripe is, line the other one up the same. These don't like being put in backwards. So yeah, I'm just kind of cheating here. You could use a solder sucker and do this properly, but I'm just heating up both sides and then just praying against the back of it to pull the legs through. There we go. So let's just um, pull the heat back on that. Get that sticking through. And yeah, again, you could use the solder sucker on this and do it right, but this works too. Okay, I got the cap nice and flush against the board. Just going to go ahead here, drop a little fresh solder on these pads. It's good practice to just take a look at the uh, solder joints before you button it up. Make sure you don't have a big old glob shorting it out. Looks good to me. All right. Stick her back together. All right, let's put this thing back together here. If this is real dirty, this is when you'd want to clean it. I'm not going to bother, because it's going to live in a shop, and it's going to get real dirty again. So those are supposed to line up down there, so that's what I'm using as a guide. I'll get these around. As with anything, don't force it too hard. If it doesn't want to go, there's probably a reason. There we go. Okay, so there's a little notch on those that has to fit in there properly. And why don't you want to go in here now? It's because you're hung up on this. There we go. Now you're in. There we go. And that's loose, but that gets screwed in. Um, okay, you can see here I got this button cattywampus. The rest of them feel all right. So let's see if I can just pop that one free. Okay, so that's got it freed up. There we go. Sweet. Now I can just feed this back through here and suddenly understand why the factory specified these horrible little clippy things, because boy, is that quick to assemble. So the uh, one with the fine threads up top here in the middle. This one goes up here. This one goes down here. And um, ah, yes, that's right. I'm an idiot. This one doesn't go on until that top bit goes on. Goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there, and the red marker mark, marker mark, the red spot tells me that this goes here, and this goes. I'm just going to tighten these up a little bit. I don't even know what they do, but they feel really loose. Which is not generally a good thing. Of course, you crimp it down too much, you can't get it back on. There we go. And now this just goes back on, but before I do that, I am going to just look quickly back at my footage and make sure I didn't just cross something up, because I don't want to let the smoke out now. Okay, I've gone back and looked at my uh, footage again, and I've got this correct. Just before I button this thing up, take a look at the difference here. You can definitely see that... Um, Old cap's got a pretty good bulge in it, and the new one's dead flat. Also, if you look at that lead there, I don't think I did that with the soldering iron. I think that's corrosion, suggesting that this thing probably uh, leaked a little electrolyte.
Now let's see if I can drop that screw again. I have to take it back apart to get the screw out. Also, the sheet metal is flimsy and you have to push it around to get the, uh, the screws to start. So that's fun. Yeah. I'm just gonna magnetize this quickly. That's better. So hold this in position. Get me started. So just get them snug. All good enough. Cool. I've got one last thing that I want to check before buttoning this thing up. This right here is uh, some kind of thermal fuse. So I just want to check across it. Good, good. Just making sure that hasn't gone off. There's no reason it would have, but just a quick, easy thing to check. Let's go ahead and get common on the two-pronged one here. White on the one with no red dot. Red on the one with a red dot. Now I just need to get this little um, hooky deal into this little slot here. And uh, oh, this has tried to pop off here. Make sure that's on there. This is sort of a spring that just makes sure that the uh, sensor's sitting at the correct distance or right up against or whatever the deal is. All right, so this thing just comes back down. You gotta make sure the tabs on the sides are in right so it'll sit. You have to put a little pressure against this because remember you're compressing that spring that holds the, um, the little fuse in there. And then you just run these two screws in. See if that fixed it. I thought it was funny that the microwave had a clock on it. Why on earth does this thing have a clock on it? What time is it? I don't suppose it matters because it's going to forget when I unplug it again. So, it thinks it's 8.07 in the morning. That's all right. That was a good sounding click. And, uh... My finger's down here. <laughs> Temp adjust buttons. Let's have it try for 93 degrees. And, uh, let's just see what it does here. I think this... Yeah, sets it for um, different heat ranges. I assume that's both elements on, that's only the high element on, that's only the low element on. But, uh, yeah, I'll leave it alone for a second here. See if we start getting some heat building up. I'd say that's good and hot. You know what that means. It means we're done. Cheers.